This was the first plane I built when I came home from Yuma this spring. Um, very similar to ones I'd built before, but the big difference on this one was I had uh, the elevator sitting up on the fin. I wanted to give it a little clearance off the ground to, so to protect it from when landing. And something I did that made things a little more complicated was that the the rudder and the elevator overlap, so we had to make cutouts and provide some a joiner here with a stick to make both that part and the upper part of the the rudder move. Um, I also raised the height of the the fuselage here um, and arranged. Uh, that the motor mount, or not the motor mount, the uh, battery and receiver mount at the front of the fuselage here was some supported by reinforcements that went back into the remainder of the fuselage and had the kind of slide-on nose that I had previously used on uh, the last model I built in, in Yuma so that this could just slide in here like so and I'd arranged it so that there, we could run a little uh, elastic band around there to, to keep it on firmly. Also had a pretty big wing. This one is a, a five foot wing. And not quite constant cord, the uh, just tapered tips with extended ailerons on on the rear. This is the wing profile at the tip, and I arranged it so that this would be removable. Those uh, pieces of um, popsicle stick basically are fed through the wing and drilled so that when it's sitting on top of the fuselage um, you can just put a uh, uh, a pin through there and not fitting on here just too exactly have to make sure that it fits in the back here to get on. And again with a pusher prop at the back and a servo up here on top of the wing, single servo using fishing line out to the wing tip through a little uh, tie tag and then back to the control horn on the elevators, or ailerons I should say. Um, pretty much the same uh, aileron control system that I've used on the previous five models quite successfully. I didn't really like the way this airplane flew. I'm not quite sure why, but uh, it had some nasty stall characteristics and on a couple of occasions just went into uh, spiral dives that could not be recovered. Um, the big dent in the in the wing is uh, where I misjudged its proximity to trees and uh, had a little crash. And you can tell from the beat up shape of the nose that we had uh, more than one less than smooth landing. So. I eventually kind of tired of this one. I'm not really happy with the way it flew. And so I built a new one. All right. This one I went back a little bit in terms in that I just here you know, let's here's the overall view. Okay. 
I put the tail back on the fuselage without, rather than having it mounted halfway up the fin. I pushed the fin forward so that there was no interference between the rudder and the elevator. Um, and again, I just went to a constant cord, straight wing, slightly less uh, wingspan than the, the previous one. Same kind of arrangement with the nose here. I'm just going to slide it off. All right, there we go. So here's looking into the nose. All right, and for reinforcement this time, I ran, let me just pull this up so you can see it. I ran this piece of 3 8 inch doweling all the way from the very tip of the nose here through to the tail. Because in the previous one, I hadn't provided reinforcement in the back end of the fuselage. And as a result, and perhaps you can see the stress line there. Okay, where the fuselage is actually buckled a bit from bad landings. All right, on this one I did provide a little cross brace to uh, make sure that the, the fin stands up nice and straight. And you can see that the fuselage here is a lot narrower than the previous one. Instead of being uh, solid all the way back to the end of the motor before it starts to taper it actually starts taping, tapering right at the leading edge of the wing all the way back to the tail and it's not nearly as deep as the previous one. All of that means that we wind up with quite a bit lighter an airplane which is good because with this uh, E-Flight 450 motor was only just providing sufficient power to keep the, the bigger one, which weighed a little over two pounds, in the air. So this one uh, flies a lot better. Again, okay, here's the uh, configuration in the front where I've got the uh, receiver to the back with the antenna sticking up and then this Turnigy 1000 FC flight control uh, and GPS system. There's the GPS antenna sitting up on top of the leading edge of the wing. Alright, and then of course the battery sits here on this adjacent to it. And then the nose here just sits on there and slides in. Need three hands to be able to do this. Okay, so there's the nose stuck on. Uh, same kind of arrangement with the uh, servo here. Single servo driving both ailerons through a fishing line out to a tie tag and back to the uh, control horn which is again just another piece of uh, um, craft stick. Same sort of thing that I've done here to, to make the control horn. And on the side of the fuselage you can see there's a couple more tie tags just uh, to provide um, some direction to the control rods and keep them from buckling. And that's about it. So I'm much happier with the way this one flies. Um, it's lighter, so it, it does quite a bit better with the, the engine. I might still uh, swap the motor out for a little something a little more powerful, give it a, a little uh, better rate of climb, because it, it does take a while to, to get up to a decent altitude. All right, thanks a lot for watching. Okay, right. let's see if this baby's going to fly. Maiden flight of the tadpole. <laughs> oh, that's quite the name you picked for it. Yeah. That's because
because I thought it looked a little more like a, a tadpole than the mast. Then what? Than the last airplanes because oh. it's got a skinnier tail with a fat body. Okay. This time I'm going to launch it in the autopilot mode, which the auto stabilization mode. So that ought to keep it flying straight and level. At least that's the plan. Okay. So the time now is uh, is coming up to 19 minutes after seven. All right. It's steered correctly. So here we go. Okay. Hey. Okay, take two. It is now twenty one minutes out. Okay. Point him up. Oh. It's responding the wrong way to the control. Oh. Oh, wow. Okay, yeah. we put it in auto mode. Okay, it's working. Oh, good. All right. Good luck. Let's give it another try. The time now is 24 minutes after. Okay. Hopefully this time will be much better. That's looking a lot better. Well, there it is, still up in the air. He's doing great. Sorry, he's going to fly into the sun. Well, he's doing wonderful up there. And you're keeping him out of the trees, that's good.
Jesus. I'm going to bring it around and then try and land him. You can't see him when he's in front of the trees like that. Maybe, there I can now. Ah! Ah! He has landed. <laughs> the tadpole has landed. I've learned something else not to do. What should you not do? <laughs> Don't put these kind of things on the, the front of the elevators because they catch when you land and uh -oh. rip off. Uh oh, did it rip off? Oh, it did rip off. Yeah. Oh, live and learn. What a rip off. <laughs> Oh well, if that's the worst that happened, you did pretty good. That was a successful flight. It was. Undo this battery here. Oh, well, take her home. Do a couple of modifications. And... We're back in business for flying. All right. Good job. Here we go for flight number two. This one, this one's with the GPS running, so we'll give her a go. Switch it to uh, manual mode now, and then I'm going to cut the power and steer it into a landing. Because now it's just gliding. Well, that wasn't too bad a landing. We need a landing strip. Well, that was a good flight. Cool. Did you put